Well, good morning and welcome to my sixth astrology video. Uh, the first video I did, it was, you could think of it as uh, four videos or as one video with four parts. And I talked about uh, transits uh, for this year, uh, what we've seen so far and what's ahead and how they affected America in particular. And it focused on uh, what I expected to happen and what I observed to happen. And for the most part, what was observed was uh, pretty much what I expected. Uh, the fifth video I did was addressing the question, is America headed uh, toward another civil war? And in that video, uh, I pointed out a lot of uh, similarities astrologically between what was going on uh, prior to the first civil war and what's going on in America now. And actually the very first person I heard raise this question about is America headed toward another civil war was an astrologer. And uh, since then I've heard many uh, people in the media, many historians, many political pundits talk about how similar things are now in the country, in our country, as they were right before the first civil war. Anyway, in this video, which I call Changing Times, uh, I'm not going to focus on America, but on the world at large. And I want to talk about some of the major cycles that began in the year 2020 and uh, some of the uh, changes and cycles that are coming up. Uh, for uh, some of the rest of the decade. So uh, let me see if I can share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, and here we have it. Changing times, the 2020s and beyond. I got a lot to cover here, so I'm gonna go as uh, fast as I can. Now, starting in 2020, there were some major planetary conjunctions. And more conjunctions and sign changes are yet to come. In this presentation, we will look at where we've been and what lies ahead for the rest of the decade and beyond. So let's begin. Uh, now, this type may look uh, kind of small to you, but don't worry, I'm just going to read it. This is actually my script. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Saturn-Pluto conjunction that occurred on January 12th in the year 2020. And here you can see those two planets conjunct. And let's see, I've written Saturn is control and Pluto is power. And the conjunction occurs in Capricorn, which is among other things, associated with authoritarian rule. Thus, even though many things are gradually shifting to Aquarius, I don't expect dictators to disappear overnight. This cycle lasts for 33 years. So that's 33 years from one uh, Saturn-Jupiter conjunction uh, to the next. And so we may have to continue to deal with remnants of authoritarian power until at least 2053. Uh, this conjunction also typically brings great change and transformation to the structure of society. And the late Andre Barbeau predicted a global pandemic in 2020 as a result of this aspect. That and some other things that are going on, which we'll also talk about. Okay, here's some more. Some of the transformative things we saw in 2020 were the start of the coronavirus pandemic. In fact, my wife and I got COVID on the very day of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. We also had the first impeachment trial of Donald Trump, the death of George Floyd, and the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, Harry and Meghan leaving the royal family, and the worsening impact of climate change. Time magazine declared 2020 the worst year ever. However, if the magazine had some astrologer, astrologers on staff, then they might have waited until the end of 2022 before passing judgment. Okay, here's some more. Keep your eye, too, on these dates when Saturn will be making either a waxing square, opposition, or waning square to Pluto. These are all important times in the current Saturn-Pluto cycle when we may experience more upheaval similar to 2020. 
the cycle completes itself with a new series of conjunctions in Pisces in 202053 and 2054. So uh, let's see, the first waxing square is going to come up on June 23rd, 2028. And because of retrograde motions of Saturn, we're going to have a series of three squares, one in June, another on November 15th, 2028, <clears throat> and the final one on March 29th, 2029. Uh, likewise, for the opposition, uh, we're going to have a series of three due to the retrograde motion of Saturn, October 17th, 2035, January 1st, 2036, and July 27, and the year 2036. For the waning square, there's only going to be one uh, on November 4th, 2044. And then finally, this current cycle will end and a new cycle will begin with Saturn and Pluto and Pisces. And there are going to be three dates for that due to the retrograde motion of Saturn. June 15th, 2053, July 10th, 2053, and February 1st of 2054. So some of you will undoubtedly be around for each of these celestial events. I'm kind of old, so uh, it's uncertain how many of these I'll see. But these are going to be times uh, when there will be tension between those two planets. And what happens harkens back to this original conjunction in Capricorn in the year 2020. So, uh, things to keep an eye out for. Now, another thing that started in 2020, which is very important, and uh, contributes to uh, all the term well, is the Barbo Planetary Cycle Index. So down here I've written, also the Barbo Planetary Cycle Index uh, predicted that the low point for the entire century would span the period from approximately the beginning of 2020 through the latter part of March 2022. This index is a cumulative sum of the distances between the outer planets from Jupiter through Pluto. And when the planets are bunched close together, the index is low and an imbalance is created thus making pandemics, wars, and other hardships more likely. So at the beginning of 2020, we were about here at the beginning of this trough. And the actual low point uh, happened uh, on the days March 22 through March 25th of this year, 2022. But the past... Uh, uh, few years from 2020 to the present, uh, we've been pretty much at rock bottom and things have pretty much felt like that. It's been one thing after another. Okay, now uh, I'm going kind of in chronological order here. So the next uh, uh, major uh, conjunction that occurred in 2020 was the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. So on April 4th, 2020, shortly after the January 12th conjunction of Saturn and Pluto, there was a similar conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto. Furthermore, both conjunctions occurred near the same degree of Capricorn, about two degrees apart. And since Jupiter tends to magnify things, this conjunction may only exacerbate the impact of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And there's no doubt that the pandemic has drastically altered the structure of our global society. Now, Jupiter moves faster than uh, Saturn, so its conjunctions are going to occur more frequently with outer planets, and the impacts are going to pass more quickly, if you will. So it's not quite as intense as a uh, the planet Saturn being conjunction, in conjunction with one of the outer planets. In this case, it kind of, uh, it's sort of like an exclamation point on the recent Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn. Okay, a little bit more on the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. Uh, the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction occurred three times in 2020, on April 4th, on June 29th, and on November 12th. 
Thus, throughout the year, the power of people and authority was magnified for good or ill. The next Jupiter-Pluto conjunction in 2020, 2033 will occur in Aquarius. This will help transfer power from individuals to groups of people. So uh, in recent years, we've been through a lot of stuff involving a lot of plants piling up in Capricorn, uh, which uh, gave uh, additional power to authoritarian figures, uh, individuals. But uh, gradually, things are shifting to Aquarius, where the shift will be from power uh, of individuals to power of the collective, power of groups. So that is where things are headed. Okay. Now, right at the end of 2020, we had Jupiter and Saturn conjunct. This is a cycle uh, that lasts about 20 years from one conjunction to the next. And it sort of sets the tone for what, you know, where society is going to uh, grow and where it's going to try and build new structures. So on de December 21st, 2020, Jupiter and Saturn were conjunct in Aquarius. And this heralded the start of a 20 year shift toward more global cooperation and democratic processes and away from authoritarian control. So we're starting to make this shift now uh, from this Capricorn authoritarian energy to this Aquarian energy of cooperation, democracy, and group activity and creativity. Now, this particular conjunction was also a shift from approximately 200 years of Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions and Earth signs to a new cycle of, uh, again, approximately 200 years of Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions and air signs, specifically a shift from an emphasis on physical wealth and resources to a world that places more value on ideas, creativity, and relationships. Okay, uh, this is gonna be very important. Uh, with this conjunction occurring in Earth signs, the focus was more on material goods and wealth was measured in terms of physical things that you had. But now we're moving toward a different kind of currency. Uh, for the next 200 years, this conjunction is going to move around from uh, the sign of Aquarius, uh, which is group creativity, uh, to Gemini, which is ideas and curiosity exploring things to Libra, which is uh, relationships with others. And this is where we are going to be building things and finding value over the next 200 years. Okay, now moving on to 2021. Uh, the dominant aspect of 2021 was a square between Saturn and Uranus that occurred three times in 2021. And there will be a near miss around October 1st in 2022. In the fall of 2022, the square is not going to be exact to the map, but will be exact to the degree. It's going to uh, you know, be about 18 degrees Taurus for Uranus, 18 degrees Aquarius for Saturn. Now, with Saturn and Aquarius and Uranus and Taurus, this created tension between regulation by groups and the des desires of individuals to do what they want. For example, just consider all the furor over mask mandates and vaccinations. We've seen this globally around the world. Uh, you know, governments, uh, institutions wanting to do one thing for the good of the people, often benevolently, uh, but individuals uh, decrying that this violates their personal liberties. So let's see, in 2021, we had the square being exact in February and June and in December. And in 2022, it's going to be exact to the nearest degree and around October, September, October. Okay. Also, 
during the Saturn Uranus square in America in 2021, we also saw the January 6th insurrection in Washington, D.C., and the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump. You know, those are both examples of uh, uh, the group, the collective wanting one thing and individuals wanting something else and uh, big clashes. So the times, they are changing, but not always for the better. Okay. Now moving on to 2022. Uh, I'll start with uh, the Mars-Venus conjunction. And we can see on February 24th, 2022, uh, they were not exactly conjunct down to the minute, but they were to the degree, to the degree, both Venus and Mars at 22 degrees Capricorn. And on February 24th, 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. Again, notice that Mars and Venus are almost exactly conjunct at 22 degrees Capricorn. This is the same degree of the previous Saturn-Pluto conjunction of 2020. Hence, this acted in particular like one big awful conjunction between Saturn, Mars, and Pluto. Venus is in there too, but Venus tries to reduce the tension a bit, but Saturn, Mars, Pluto, they're <clears throat> really headed in a you know, bad direction, uh, Saturn control, Mars, uh, war, Pluto, death and transformation. So it's not at all surprising that someone beats the drums of war during this time. Uh, shortly after that, on March 3rd, 2022, Mars and Pluto were exactly conjunct with Venus less than half a degree away. Hence, there was a very heightened potential uh, for an authoritarian use of force and power at this time. And here you can see them all together at 27 degrees Capricorn. Okay. Additionally, with this triple conjunction also conjunct natal, natal Pluto in, in the July 2nd, 1776 resolution for independence chart, it's no wonder that America got involved. Now, I call this uh, the Resolution for Independence chart because on July 2nd, uh, the Continental Congress uh, in the uh, colonies still back then, they unanimously passed a resolution for independence from Great Britain. And then two days later on July 4th, 1776, they ratified the text for the Declaration of Independence. So charts for those two days, I call the Resolution for Independence chart, and then subsequently the Declaration of Independence chart. Those are two very important uh, dates in the history of America, and both charts, um, they tell us things about what's going on. And there are other charts people use, like uh, the charts for the creation and ratification of the Constitution of the United States. All of these can be milestones in our history, and uh, all of these can be charts that can be used to help us understand uh, what's going on in America and where it's headed. But in this case, this triple conjunction of Venus, Pluto, and Mars is at 27 degrees Capricorn in both July 2nd and actually July 4th charts. Pluto was at 27 degrees Capricorn. Yeah, so we're very involved with what's going on uh, with this Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, also on this day, as well as on February 24th, 2022, transiting uh, Uranus uh, was less than a degree from being exactly opposite Putin's natal Venus. And transit like this can make someone very erratic and unstable if they are not very balanced to begin with. Now, there's some dispute about the uh, accuracy of the chart that most people use for Vladimir Putin, showing a birth on October 7th uh, uh, in 1952, born at 9.30 a.m. in St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, but I point out two things. One, at least with 
present assets chart has worked fairly well. And two, uh, the webmaster uh, for uh, Putin's webpage says, yes, this is his correct birth data. So uh, it's working. I have some faith in it. Putin had Venus in his first house. This has to do with his self, his personality. Uranus always breaks up the existing pattern. It's a plan of genius and eccentricity and uh, make depressiveness. Uh, so uh, if he's not balanced, this can make him very erratic. And sure enough, he was very erratic. And lastly, notice that Mars in the 1991 chart for Russia after the breakup of the Soviet Union is in a very strong opposition to NATO Mars in the July 2nd, 1776 resolution for independence chart. Thus, it is no wonder that America and Russia often have an adversarial relationship. If we look at these two charts, I've got Russia on the outside. It has Mars at 19 degrees Sagittarius, exactly opposite Mars at 19 degrees Gemini in this uh, July 2nd resolution for independence chart. Now, a good question to ask, and one you could also ask is, okay, the chart you're using for Russia is uh, the 1991 chart uh, for the new Russia after the breakup of the Soviet Union, but we had a really bad relationship with Russia long before that. What was going on with uh, the USA chart or this chart and uh, the Soviet Union chart before then? Well, I've looked at that, and yeah, there's a lot of squares and oppositions between the two charts. So even though the old Soviet Union chart uh, was is different from this uh, modern chart for Russia. There's, you know, both charts were in a bad relationship uh, with uh, charts that are often used for America. Okay, again, don't forget that the Barbo Planetary Cycle Index was also at a low at this time. It first got near the bottom for the century around the start of 2020. And it reached its absolute low on March 22 through 25, 2022. And when the plants are this close together, an imbalance is created. So I did uh, some calculations by hand to fine tune this Barbeau planetary index. And we were at the same low point from March 22nd through March 25th of this year. And this was done calculating the classic Barbeau index. Uh, which just looked at the cumulative distance between the planets uh, Jupiter, uh, Saturn, Pluto, ne um, I'm sorry, Jupiter, Saturn, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Now, if I throw in Chiron into that mix, then we reach the low point on April 9th. So uh, either way, things were pretty bad or, uh, in March and uh, early April. Okay. Now, additionally, from about December 15th of 2021 through April 22nd, 2022, all the plants, except for occasionally the moon, which moves all around the zodiac, uh, were on one side of the moon's nodes. These lunar nodes here, we call this the north node and the south node. And uh, this is a condition known as Kalasarpa Yoga, in Vedic astrology. And what this does is it hymns in the planetary energies and inhibits their flow. So here you can see everything bunched up on one side of these lunar nodes. They're close together, going to the Barbo planetary cycle index near a low point, and the energy is being hemmed in by the lunar nodes. Okay. Hence, if you felt really bad during the months of March and April of 2022, now you know why. It was a really bleak time astrologically. And I know that I and many others just felt really awful in March and uh, much of April. Uh, worse than I've ever felt things on the planet before. Uh, everything felt very bleak. We had no idea if this war in Ukraine was going to 
suddenly expand beyond the borders, result in a nuclear exchange between superpowers, destroy everything. You know, usually I can sit here in isolation in my own little house, uh, staying away from people during this pandemic, but at the same time, <clears throat> I feel a connectivity with the rest of the world. I feel connected to people. I feel their light and their joy. But during this period, it's like all of that was shut off. I felt very little joy in the world. It was very, very light. I've talked to some other people and they've told me they felt the same. <clears throat> However, for much of 2022, Saturn, which uh, is involved with regulation, has been in Aquarius, group action, squaring the lunar mass, that intensifies things. So here we have that right here. This T square, as we call it, has endured uh, throughout the year. And consequently, NATO and EU, the European Union, have strengthened and provided necessary balance and support for Ukraine. So the uh, militaristic actions of Russia right now, the authoritarian power of Putin represented in terms of what's in the sky now by uh, Pluto up here in Capricorn, it's been counterbalanced by this group action of NATO and the European Union. Uh, and to support Ukraine and support democracy. Okay. Now, one thing a lot of people were really looking forward to in 2022 is this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that occurred on April 12th, 2022. Uh, this conjunction is often associated with idealism and progressive politics. However, since we were still under Kalasarpa Yoga and a low Barbo index, I feel that that put a damper on what might have been. Nonetheless, uh, as the pandemic eased, everyone wanted to spend money on travel and inflation soared. Uh, face of this conjunction, we did not want. So, you know, we probably want something much more spiritual, uh, we may have gotten some of that, but we definitely got people going overboard on spending money on travel after being cooped up in quarantine for so long. And we also <coughs> typically get a lot of inflation when Jupiter is going through Pisces. But on the other hand, President Biden has managed to pass a lot of progressive legislation in spite of the difficulties. And that is also Jupiter, Neptune, and action. So here from uh, some stories on MSNBC, here's one of their graphics showing a lot of uh, progressive legislation and other things that were accomplished uh, by Biden this year. Okay. Now, uh, some planets are changing sign. Some have already changing sign, and we got some big sign changes coming up. And this is going to produce a very definite shift in tone. Overall, things are shifting from uh, Earth and water signs, which is more introverted thinking, introverted feeling, to uh, fire and air signs, which is extroverted feeling and uh, extrovert thinking. So on May 10th, 2022, Jupiter left Pisces and entered Aries where it will mostly remain until May 16th, 2023. Only for one brief period from about October 27th through December 20th, will it retrograde back into Pisces and this might bode well for the Democrats in the November 8 midterm election, since Jupiter in Pisces is more inclined to support progressive ideas. And I hope so. Conservative ideas ties to the past, and we can't stay linked with the past forever. Eventually, we have to move forward, but we have to do so with balance. 
for the most part, Jupiter will be in Aries for about a year, and at best, people will feel somewhat reborn and have a renewed sense of life and energy. And that's how a lot of people are feeling, like we're coming out of the pandemic, uh, getting back in the swing of things. However, at worst, this could result in an expansion of one's aggressive tendencies. Most people will probably experience the former, but a few will consciously choose, without a doubt, to pursue the latter. Okay, now, moving on into 2023, on March 11th, 2023, Jupiter and Chiron will be conjunct in Aries. As a result, some will feel like their bodies are wounded, and some will feel like their bodies are healing. However, a few others will go beyond the body and realize that their awareness is their true spiritual self. And may you be one of those. Okay, the planet Chiron, it's a little planetoid that lies between uh, Saturn and Uranus. Saturn is the last planet we can see with the naked eye. And we think of, uh, you know, Sun through Saturn. Those are planets uh, that have to do with our personal life. Beyond that are the planets we can't see with the naked eye, and they have to do with our transpersonal, our more cosmic existence. And Chiron, uh, Chiron is like a bridge between the two. And its position and chart shows how we will approach uh, this uh, transformation from the personal to the transpersonal, how we will try and extend, where we will find this higher spirituality, okay? But as I often say, uh, quite frequently, you can't create a cosmic omelet without having to first uh, crack a few cosmic eggs. So the first stage in change is sometimes being wounded to help us uh, break away from what we've become attached to. And that wounding is then followed by healing, and that healing is followed by transcendence. Okay? So uh, many people will respond just to the wounding part of Chiron. Uh, but as you uh, evolve, you will respond more and more to its spiritual transcendence. With Chiron in Aries, uh, we find that spirituality within ourselves at the very core, which is our awareness. That is a truly holy spiritual part of our existence, not all the little things out there that we focus on. And with Jupiter coming into conjunction, conjunction with Chiron, again, Jupiter expands things. So it's like a, an exclamation point. <clears throat> now, the next big thing that's happening is uh, Pluto moving into the sign of Aquarius, and that's going to first happen on March 23rd, 2023. Pluto will briefly slip into the sign of Aquarius Aquarius, where it hasn't been for a very long time. It won't be like the fifth dimension seeing age of Aquarius over and over again. You know, it's not going to automatically solve our problems. But it can be like that sometimes if we wish it. More realistically, Aquarius is about working together with others in a creative way. And Pluto represents power and transformation. And Aquarius power is transferred to the people. Now, with climate change and other things going on, uh, I often feel like we're going to have to start working together uh, collectively as a group because we have no other choice if uh, humanity is going to survive. And uh, astrology is giving us clues as to the timing of this thing. Uh, Pluto moves into Aquarius briefly in uh, the year 2023, more solidly in 2024. And this is where we're going to see more of the shift occurring, uh, moving away from authoritarianism, power in individuals, to uh, power in the group, the collective, and probably more democracy. Now... We had a good taste of Aquarius 
in May 2009, not with Pluto, but uh, in 2009, when Jupiter, Chiron, and Neptune were all conjunct in Aquarius. Uh, this is when Obama had just uh, uh, taken office as president. At that time, we were wounded by the financial crisis, but it was a time of hope and change. Previously, Pluto was a 1778 through 1798, and this period saw the American and French revolutions and the creation of the U.S. Constitution. Again, both of these revolutions were about transferring power from individuals to the people. Okay, the French Revolution had floundered uh, uh, a little bit afterwards. There was a reign of terror, and then Napoleon. Uh, took over and became emperor, but eventually it's found its footing again. So uh, we saw some of this power of Aquarius in 2009 with this conjunction, this focus on spirituality, hope, Neptune, change. It'll be a little different with Pluto, but we're going to definitely see more power in the hands of groups rather than just single individuals. Okay, Pluto will enter Aquarius on March 23rd, 2023, and it won't completely leave until January 19th, 2044. During this period, expect a shift of power from individuals to the people, more democracy, more creativity from groups, and more global co- connectivity as people come together to solve the problems of society. Okay, next we have a Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Jupiter and Uranus will be conjunct in Taurus on April 20th, 2024. This can stimulate creativity, but also economic reversals. The last time these plants were conjunct in Taurus was on May 7th, 1941. America and Russia entered World War One. Ah, I should, uh, let's see, let me change this. World War Two. always a few typos. So we entered World War Two that year, the Manhattan Project began, economy struggled, but also not long after, on May 24th, 1941, while this uh, conjunction was still in effect. Bob Dylan was born. And uh, his music, it's uh, very down to earth, but very creative. And he had uh, the uh, strong sextile with Neptune and Pisces. So uh, this higher sophistication, it's also there in his music. Okay. Now, Moving on, Uh, in the year 2025, the planet Uranus will move into Gemini. This is going to be a biggie. Uranus will be in Gemini from 2025 until 2033. The last time Uranus was in Gemini was from 1941 to 1949, and this was a period of great invention that saw the invention or development of programmable computers, the atomic bomb, radar, jet airplanes, the transistor, microwave ovens, magnetic tape recording, television, the turboprop engine, penicillin, and surprisingly, Velcro, the Slinky, and the Frisbee. Thus, the period from 2025 to 2033 is likely to also be a period of great invention. And with the problems our society faces, we're going to need that. Okay. Another biggie, Neptune moving into Aries. Neptune will be in Aries from 2025 until 2038. The last time Neptune was in Aries was from 1861 to 1874. And at best, 2025 to 2038 will be a time of vision and spiritual awakening awakening for individuals. However, this can also be a time of conflict driven by ideology. That is what is probably more likely. If we go back in history, from 1861 to 1874, we saw several wars around the globe 
including the American Civil War, the Franco-Prussian War, the New Zealand Wars, the Paraguayan War, the Austro-Prussian War, the Bhutan War, the Russo uh, Circassian War, the Third Anglo Ashanti War, the Third Carlos War, the Ethiopian Egyptian War, the Federal War in Venezuela, the January Uprising in the Russian Empire, the Taiping Rebellion, the Dugan Revolt in China, and the Boshin War in China. Well, let's all hope that, that this next Neptune and Aries period will avoid such conflicts. Uh, it's awful that Russia decided to invade Ukraine. Uh, but we have mechanisms in place that didn't exist uh, back in the 1800s. We have the United Nations. We have uh, channels of diplomacy. So there will be probably this uh, pressure toward conflict based upon ideology. But I'm hoping that most of them can be resolved through diplomacy and not war. Okay, Saturn Moon Neptune conjunction. Uh, this date, February 19th, 2026, is going to be something to keep an eye on. Saturn will be in Aries from 2025 until 2028, and this could exacerbate any conflicts related to Neptune in Aries. The most critical time, though, might be on February 19th, 2026, when Saturn, Neptune, and Moon and Neptune are all conjuncted zero degrees Aries. This is very similar to what was present at the start of the American Civil War. If you go back and find and look at my uh, video on whether we're headed toward another uh, civil war in America, you'll find more information about this. Uh, in the July 2nd resolution for independence chart, Venus was at zero degrees Cancer. Uh, things at zero degrees Aries are exactly square that, and that can be the match that lights the fire. And the day after uh, the Civil War officially began, uh, Neptune moved into zero degrees Aries. So uh, this particular date, and just sort of the general time after this and before this in 20. Uh, 25, those are times to keep an eye on with regard to what's happening in America. Uh, there are some tensions ahead for America as I talk about in that Civil War video I did. Nonetheless, countering the doom and gloom of Neptune and Saturn and Aries might be a series of beneficial aspects between Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto that will take place between 2025 and 20. 32 sextals and trines up here. I've got them all listed. Uh, these aspects uh, are reminiscent of the period from 577 to 574 before the Common Era when these planets went through a series of conjunctions. And that was a magnificent time in the history of. Mankind. At that point, we saw the birth of Taoism, Confucianism, Buddhism, Greek philosophy, the writing of the Upanishads, the composition of the Torah during uh, uh, the Babylonian exile uh, for my Jewish ancestors. And thus, there's hope that we will also see something extraordinary coming out of this period, too. I hope so, and that's what I'm aiming for. Now, the most extraordinary day of the entire century could very well be July 21st, 2026. On this day, almost all the planets will be creating great harmony with one another. And this could be the start of something really, really big. And you look at all these planets, they all seem to be making trines and sextals to one another. And it's just a phenomenal amount of harmony. And so there may be something very noticeable that happens at that time. And even if it doesn't, it could be something we recognize in retrospect that began at this time. And people born on this day uh, look to see what uh, they do once they become adults and start uh, accomplishing things and spreading these energies throughout the world. Okay. Lastly, we're going to talk about Chiron moving into Taurus. Chiron resides between Saturn and Uranus, 
And it is a bridge uh, between the personal and the transpersonal. And the sign is in tells us how we will approach a higher spirituality. However, it can also result in wounding and healing before we experience the spiritual. Chiron will be in Taurus from approximately 2026 until 2034. And when in Taurus, it is easier to experience spiritual joy through material pleasure. However, financial wounding also frequently occurs during these periods. When Chiron was in Taurus from 1976 through 1983, Austin, Texas, where I was living, was a spiritual hippie paradise. And we began to see the rise of interest in Native American spirituality, Earth, Taurus is an Earth sign. There was also double-digit inflation in the latter part of the 70s. Now, from 1926 to 1933 with Chiron Taurus, we saw the joyousness of the Roaring Twenties. Again, joy through physical expression. Give way to the Great Depression. And from 1877 to 1883, when Chiron was again Taurus, we saw the Gilded Age, the latter part of the Victorian Age, the Industrial Revolution, and period known as the Long Depression. We're also going to have a Saturn-Chiron conjunction coming up in uh, Taurus. When Saturn and Chiron are conjunct, we often see the rise of some new spiritual or philosophical movement. In 1966, they were conjunct in Pisces, and we saw the popularization of Eastern meditation and spirituality. But that's all uh, related to Pisces. But in 1883, they were conjunct in Taurus, and that year saw the release of Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Nietzsche, uh, a very, very influential uh, philosopher. These plants were also conjunct in Taurus in 1735, and we saw not only the rise of the spiritual teachings of Emanuel Swedenborg, and I a lot of times this is spelled with an E, not an I, so you can change that if you want. And then a few years later, but, uh, wait, ah, sorry, we saw the rise of Swedenborg's teaching a few years later after this conjunction. Uh, and then we also saw the emergence of the Baal Shem Tov and the Hasidic movement in Judaism with this emphasis on both joy and Kabbalah, Kabbalah as its spiritual backbone. And the next date for this conjunction in Taurus is June 8th, 2028. So again, uh, we'll see some sort of new spiritual movement arise. We may not notice it then, it may be in retrospect, but we haven't had Saturn and Chiron conjunct uh, since 1966, and this conjunction is gonna be in Taurus, an earth sign, down to earth, joy, could be fun. And finally, on this last slide, I show you kind of a, a timeline for all these cycles so you can see how they overlap. Uh, first, we have this major cycle of transformation, and I need to transform that because I misspelled. There we go. Transformation of structures as authoritarianism gives way to global cooperation. That's a very long cycle, the Saturn-Pluto cycle. Next, we have the Jupiter-Saturn cycle. They were conjunct in Aquarius. The groundwork is laid for a global society in a 200-year period that will value cooperation, ideas, and relationships over material goods. Next, we have this shorter Jupiter-Neptune cycle that began Pisces. And... Uh, for a period of time, progressive visions will lead the way. And then we have the Pluto in Aquarius sojourn. And this is a fairly long cycle where group creativity, global connectivity, and power to the people will be prominent. A little shorter cycle, but still pretty lengthy, is Neptune in Aries, Aries which can be either individual spirituality and or ideological conflicts. This is going to be tempered by the Pluto and Aquarius cycle. And so I think the ideological conflicts, they're going to be uh, movements from dictatorships to democracies, probably like we saw with the American Revolution and the French Revolution. Uh, 
this may not bode well for countries like uh, China or Russia as it's uh, existing today. Uh, people will be clamoring for more of a say in what happens. Then Aries, or I'm sorry, Uranus and Gemini. This uh, period, we're going to have this great uh, period of invention going on uh, in the latter part of uh, this decade and a little bit into the, the 2030s. So, uh, don't know exactly what will happen, but it should be great. And uh, the inventions of this era might help save us. And finally, this period of Chiron and Taurus that would be punctuated by the conjunction of Saturn and Chiron and Taurus. There will be some sort of new Earth-centered or spiritual, sensual spirituality where we will get joy from our physical environment in some way. It will be physical, but the joy will be spiritual. But there may also be some financial wounding. So, in summary, the years ahead may bring not only spiritual promise and breakthroughs in technology, but also the possibility of additional conflicts and more financial woes. Nonetheless, the promise of the good seems to outweigh the possibility of the bad. Additionally, Never forget that the stars are not our destiny. The stars only influence. Our destiny is what we decide to do with that influence. Okay, well, that's my last slide. Let me stop sharing this. And I hope you enjoyed this. It's uh, quite a lot. Uh, we're in the bad times now. These are the birth pains, but there are some phenomenal things ahead for the rest of this decade. Maybe also some bad times, but as I said, uh, the uh, promise of the good outweighs the possibility of the bad. So I'm very excited, exciting times ahead. I hope they're good for all of us. And may we go into those times with a sense of oneness and peace, and may we all work together in a good way. Okay, and that's it. So. So long for today. I hope you enjoyed it.